Greetings to all of you. I am thankful to Fiki and Sanjeev Mehta for giving me this opportunity to share a few thoughts with you today. The theme of this convention is inclusive and sustainable growth. As India, in its 75th year of independence, looks toward the future and what it wants to accomplish by the time it turns 100 in 2047. This is a crucial decade for India to shape its own future and even beyond to chart a path for other developing countries in a global context that has been transformed by the pandemic, conflict and the generational fight against the climate change. The big question is, how do we spread the gains of the future to everyone, to informal workers, agricultural laborers, and women who want to participate in our workforce. It is our responsibility to shape the best path that will ensure a future India that at 100 years of independence can be 25 to 30 trillion dollars in size. But more importantly, in one where our nurses, farmers, teachers and truck drivers all have the opportunity of having a good job and a stability that other people enjoy. Let me begin with where we are today, which is our starting point. India's progress over the past decade has been quite remarkable. The economy's position has gone from the 10th largest economy to the 5th largest. And now it is clearly the fastest growing major economy, a real bright spot in the global economy, which otherwise is facing strong recessionary impulses, multi-decade high inflation, record levels of public debt, and the squeezing of real household incomes. India's economic recovery seems broadly on track with growth impulses widening in both industrial and services sectors. Credit growth has increased to a 11 year high. India will likely remain the world's fastest major economy for the third consecutive year in 2023 and hopefully for several years to come. Looking over the next few decades, India presents a major growth opportunity. At the same time, it is important to remember the scope of reforms India has undertaken in the last few years. Pre-pandemic, the government introduced the GST, the IBC, an inflation targeting framework, a reduction in the corporate tax rate, and addressing the banking sector balance sheets. Since the pandemic, the pace of structural reforms has picked up further. Measures like labor reforms, the PM Gati Shakti, and National Asset Monetization Plan a production-linked incentive scheme to boost domestic manufacturing, higher investment limits for small businesses, power sector reforms, and aggressive disinvestment targets. The scope and scale of economic reform has been really fast-paced, and this will drive productivity improvements and a continued growth in capital accumulation. Reform is going to be a key pillar that will propel the fundamentals of India's outperformance in the coming decades. Crucially, in the past few years, we have also made significant progress in achieving results in the social sector, particularly in extending the reach and access of basic services to households. Think of electrification, bank accounts, healthcare insurance, sanitation, and connectivity. Hundreds of millions of people have been lifted out of poverty, while health outcomes have also improved significantly. India implemented one of the most successful COVID vaccination programs in the world. This strong foundation sets the stage for a renewed vision for India at 2047. 
If you are to look at a size of a 20 trillion dollar economy, our per capita GDP would be at $13,000, six times the current level. If we can raise our growth trending rate to 8% from 6.5%, we can achieve a 13, 30 trillion dollar economy. It will be 10 times the current size. But it is not only about the quantum of growth and the size of our economy. To fulfill our Prime Minister's vision of becoming a developed nation as we celebrate our 100th year of independence, we will need to be deliberate in ensuring that the fruits of our long-term growth potential reaches every citizen. So what does success look like for India at 2047? We can propose a few metrics. First, in terms of air pollution, if we can reduce it to one-fourth of its current levels and also produce universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water, that will go a long way. Second, half of our labor force should be comprised of women. Third, we can eliminate the malnutrition and move towards a coverage ratio equivalent of more than one doctor per thousand people from 0.5 currently through strengthening the primary care system as well as harnessing the digital transformation technology. And four, in terms of education, success in education should shift from a focus on educational attainment to educational outcome. I think all of this is achievable and within our reach. To realize the potential of our vast talent pool, we will need to transform our skilling, research infrastructure, as well as bring more women into the workforce. The capacity and quality of our skilling infrastructure should be scaled up to at least 10 million people per year. It will be important to develop dual approaches where we have both classroom as well as industry-based learning and internships. We must also empower our research and higher education institutions to level up in the quantity and quality of our research output as India seeks to become a global leader in AI, machine learning, advanced manufacturing and next generation of products and services beyond the cloud and IoT. To bring more women into the workforce, we can create a leading edge, digitally integrated national child care network. By 2047, more than half of Indians will likely be living in the cities from the current 35%. We will need not only smart cities, but cities that are built for the future, livable, green and less polluted while also being robust engines of job generation. Focusing on sectors like tourism can have a multiplier effect. Focus on tourism can improve the country's connectivity, sanitation, infrastructure links, creation of jobs and valuable foreign exchange. I have traveled around the world but nowhere have I seen as many incredible historical sites and landmarks like we have in India. Upgrading our facilities and infrastructure, training the informal workers in the sector and using digital to deliver a seamless customer experience can dramatically transform India's tourism industry. It is a tremendous opportunity that is ripe for takeoff. Then coming to healthcare, our goal should be to ensure universal, affordable healthcare access through a strong focus on primary healthcare. We can move towards a coverage ratio equivalent of more than one doctor per thousand people by harnessing the digital transformation strategies using our existing medical resources. Ensuring interoperable digital health records 
will be key as will reimagining the health workforce to make more efficient use of our limited resources for instance through the introduction of new cadres of health workers outside of doctors and nurses in addition building a leading care network for the elderly will be key as india's above 65 age population doubles between 2015 and 2035 from being the diabetes and cancer capital of the world india can become a champion of preventive and digital healthcare delivery and set a benchmark in the world we can also deepen and broaden the structure of our private sector beyond large conglomerates and high tech startups we can extend support to the growth of small and medium businesses throughout the country from around 12% employment in small and medium businesses currently we should be targeting a level of 35 to 45% by 2047 at par with the developed nations as a benchmark i believe such a vision is very much achievable by 2047 firstly because of the uniqueness of the present moment second because of the massive potential of technology to address many of our most persistent developmental challenges and the unbelievable rate at which india has been adopting digital technologies both in the private and public sector we have the right human capital we have the scale we just need to make the right investments and focus on specific areas to achieve these results in addition the major pandemic themes especially accelerated digital adoption the rebalancing of the global supply chains and the environmental sustainability or energy transition reinforce india's fundamental growth potential from work to health to education to shopping for 3 years and more now the internet has penetrated ever further into our daily lives advances in ai cloud computing and data technology have raced forward proprietary ai and big data are already separating top tier businesses from the rest soon all businesses will become data and ai businesses no sector can escape the data revolution for some new technologies appending industries and replacing jobs is a concern but for india it is a uniquely placed wave that will leave that will lead india into the future our tech strength means we are well placed to continue reimagining our national blueprint using digital if we use technology in the right way and put our people first it can fix the structural problems that have held us back for several decades the digital opportunity is especially enticing given the second mega trend that is the global rebalancing of the supply chain as global supply chains shift there is a real opportunity to create an india plus based supply chain as nearly every sector is on the precipice of dramatic disruption from energy and automobiles to pharmaceuticals to medical devices now manufacturing methods combined with new supply routes are a chance to claim a more central position in the new economy globally it is a massive opportunity for india to fill the void in the global supply chains in the coming decades the third in the coming years the pressure to accelerate the shift towards sustainable technologies will increase for both businesses and governments this pressure is also an opportunity particularly for india we already have the cheapest solar prices and some of the best firms in the world driving our energy transition and it is not just renewable energy india can also lead in electric vehicles storage batteries water efficiency as well as in designing circular economy solutions given where india is in our economic developmental curve this is also a great opportunity for the country to create jobs through building a green economy whether through solar installation microgrids sustainable cooling or better waste management i started this speech with the assertion that india's future is incredibly exciting and now i would like to finish the same way the decades ahead holds a lot of promise 
throughout the country, many of us businesses and individuals alike are already grasping the opportunities of a changing world. Many Indians are more than ready for the future and they are creating the future in fact. And I am so excited to see how the next decade will unfold. Thank you for listening.